got a good episode for you. Whoa, you're looking fucking huge too, bro. Jesus. Yeah, I've been eating, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what's the what, what's the weight at now? I'm like actually uh, today was my highest weight so far. I was like 307 this morning. Nice man, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, yeah, I just been honestly just been eating more, training just as much. Cardio is like up and down, just kind of depends. Um, but yeah, I mean, keeping good body composition, especially for just being on TRT and like a little bit of GH. Yeah. So I'm happy with it. Gonna try to stay like under 310 uh, before I start my blast, just because like I don't want, I want to be like pretty lean to start my yeah, offseason. Yeah. Before, but I mean, that should be easy. I feel, I, I think I'm probably doing like 4,500, 5,000 calories a day. Nice. And I'm like, and I feel like pretty comfortable, you know? Yeah. Um, did you want to talk about like your new coach or anything like that? Well, right now I'm not really working with anybody. Um, okay, just gotcha. doing my own thing. Uh, you know, going to show up to Burlington. Obviously I have an idea of like who I'm going to work with, but, uh, and we'll just see how things go between now and then. Um, yeah, nice. but, uh, but yeah, no, man, it's just chilling right now. Like, you know, on cruise. Yeah. Uh, did you want to do you want to talk about who you were thinking about or just going to wait for now? Oh, well, I mean, it's kind of out there anyways. Uh, Skylar helped me um, with, um, like, my last six weeks going to Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, um, and me and him have been talking a lot about doing an off-season phase. So, um, and, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably the direction I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how'd you get hooked up with uh, Skylar and, like, how'd you guys change what you did from uh, Toronto going to Vancouver? I know we talked about this, but just for the – Oh yeah. Well, well, yeah, I just kind of knew I needed some, like some changes like, uh, you know, from Toronto to Vancouver and just kind of need to push things a bit harder. Yeah. So, um, yeah, me and Skylar just got to talking after the show and, you know, I kind of let him know what I was doing and, and I got the opinions of some other people as well. And, uh, you know, just based on the feedback, I just knew I could have did more kind of like from a supplement standpoint, from a food standpoint, like for someone my size. So yeah. Skylar just helped me with that. And, uh, you know, he gave me a lot of attention. Like, you know, we were talking on the daily, uh, and, you know, I, I just feel like he just kind of knew what it took for someone like with my size to actually like fill out, like coming at my best. And yeah, for the rest of that prep, like he fed me like a ton of food, uh, which like I was training like almost every day, like my recovery was like absolutely insane. Yeah. And uh, I came in like 10 pounds heavier to Vancouver in like six weeks. So and I was super happy with that and how it went and, and how he was as a coach. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I kind of feel like I owe it to the guy, <laughs> like to yeah, give him, sure. give him a Give him off season, right? And now, like, I'll be in Burlington, obviously, with all you guys. Then, and, yeah. and he lives; he's there as well. So, to have a coach that's around in person, I think, is uh, going to be a pretty big asset as well. So, sure. so yeah, that, that's uh, that's where I'm leaning. Oh, that's cool. Um, did you watch the uh, the Spain show at all? Just happened. Yeah, I just saw the highlights and stuff from Instagram. Um, yeah. Man, I have I have so many clients and prep myself right now. Like I was telling you that, like I'm just like my whole days are just between my training and eating and, and talking to my clients. I'm just like booked. So I I have to a whole lot of attention to uh, what's going on in the bodybuilding world. But yeah, I mean, I saw obviously that in Italy Nathan beat Regan, and then uh, in in Spain Regan beat Nathan. Yeah. Um, so two two different judging panels, or I I think they're the same. I, I but I could be wrong. Um, I don't know, man. To be honest. I think Regan looked really, really good in Spain. I, I definitely think that they made the right call in Italy. Um, but I think the argument for me, first of all, I like Regan's physique more than Nathan's because he's bigger. Yeah. Right. So obviously, like you could probably yeah. understand, like it's fucking bodybuilding. Like we're open bodybuilders. We love to see guys that are huge and aesthetic. So he's basically got both. So to me, it like seemed pretty clear cut, especially because. Yes, Nathan is, like, he's super conditioned all that, but he doesn't have, like, certain things that he might beat Regan on. Like, they both didn't have the striated and dug out hamstrings. And, or, sorry, uh, glutes. They both had hamstrings, but they didn't have glutes. So, it's kind of like, okay, you know, are you going to argue that Regan wasn't as conditioned if they both don't have, like, striations in their glutes? To me, I would say the conditioning is about the same. Uh, at the end of the day, you just kind of tend to go to a bigger guy if he looks conditioned. You know, yeah, because I think um, you know, I'm not sure, um, but I I heard that Regan came in probably a little bit off in pre judging at Italy, and mm -hmm. and like condition wise, and that's probably where Nathan got him because there was so much of a gap in conditioning there, and then obviously Regan looked a lot better at Spain, and then with the size and the shape, uh, I mean, I, I'm I feel the exact same way as you do. Like 
obviously I'm a bigger guy myself, but I think Regan has like, especially for a guy that's like six foot, like super aesthetic, super good symmetry, like just a pretty physique. And now he's bigger than he was. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, good on him for the improvements he made. And, uh, I'm pumped that he got that qualification, man. Cause I think, uh, I think he's going to bring like a, a, like a much more like a package that belongs at the Olympia this time, as opposed to like his like previous showings where, you know, he probably just wasn't there. A hundred percent. And I think in my opinion, Regan has the potential to be more competitive than Nathan at the Olympia. So definitely very exciting. Um, I actually talked to Alora, who was with Regan in Italy. And she said that basically what had happened was it was like a combination of like, they kind of missed the peak. Um, but also there was like a tanning issue uh, where like his tan, like kind of wiped off completely, which I can understand because that happened to me kind of at New York and it does kind of change your look. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like when things are close, you could argue it either way. So I guess really the only thing that you could do is like be there in person to get the most accurate kind of opinion, right? Like unless you're sitting there where the judges are looking at every little detail, it's very hard to judge who should have won over a live stream or photos. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, both, the, like, I mean, we, we want to see both of these guys at the Olympia and they both got qualifications now. So, you know, I think that's the, like the, the coolest thing about it. And, and now they'll, they'll get to go for round three at the Olympia. Yeah. And you know, whoever gets that better placing is is a top dog this year between two of those guys. For sure. And one one thing I'll comment on is uh, you know, I don't think, in my opinion, it's like it's not good for the sport to have the fans like throw so much hate around when like at the winners of the shows. Like no, no, no. I, I think it's like kind of like obnoxious that there's like this new trend to just like bash on the winner no matter what. Like we see with with Ian, now it's happening with Regan. It's like why it just seems yeah, we, don't to judge, we don't judge the shows <laughs> exactly like yeah. you, you're, you're kind of just wasting your time and just putting out negative energy for no reason like i just don't i don't know i don't like it and, and even the shit that people get on with with like oh this person has a bigger social media following like that's why they they won and stuff like that it's like that's like that's just not true and like yeah oh and even if there was any like political sway like that like it, it would just be too obvious and you know, there's, there's just like, I just feel like there's absolutely no favoritism going on, like with the judging, like judges just have like too much to risk. And like, there's too many authentic judges that would like call other judges out on their bullshit. If there was any of that going on, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like generally at these shows, like we know, like there's usually two or three judges that have the most sway and like, you know, people generally fall in line and, but those judges really know what they're talking about. And and it's, it's kind of important for it to be like that because it keeps the criteria the same from show to show. Yeah. Right. If you have like a different, like head judge at every show, then like the way shows will be judged will be all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, th these guys got it down. It just, it is what it is. Yeah, no, it's, and it's, it's cool when close, when, when shows are that close, man, like you want to see competitiveness, like it just makes it more exciting. So yeah, it was yeah. cool to see. Um, I think there's like one more qualifying show before the Olympia, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, and then that's pretty much it. I think for the, for the is that the California show or the Reno show? I think so. Yeah. Or wait, I think it's um the legions. Yeah, that's a, is that in Reno this year? Actually, I'm not sure. I thought it was California, but I could be wrong. So yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. It's funny how you can like tune out of the shows when you're like in in your off season. Yeah, I felt like when I was in like contest prep, like I was like buying every live stream and like literally like sitting there like dying, wishing I was there too, like competing. Like it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I know. I, I mean, this is actually probably the first time I've been out of the loop, uh, like with bodybuilding. Like usually, like when bodybuilding's in season, I'm keeping up with every show because I mean, obviously that's what we do, and like and like I love it. But um, yeah, I mean, just right right now for me, spare time is just like limited, and you know, I'm also getting ready for this move and everything like that, trying to get that stuff in order. So it's like I've yeah. I've literally never been this busy in my whole life. Like it's good. Like I'm not like overwhelmed or anything, but it's like I'm just like my days are taken up. <laughs> like, yeah, you know? for sure. No, I feel you, man. Sometimes I feel overwhelmed, but like it's good that we can like do it now, like while you're able to handle it. You yeah, know? it's like hundred percent, man. Yeah, you know, this is the time to to be overwhelmed, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, how's everything with you, bro? Like, obviously, I, you know, your off season's going good. Like, you're starting your actual off season, right? Yeah, man. So yeah, so we got about three weeks in now, and no, I'm I'm happy, man. Like my my weights are like going up like pretty quick, uh, but I'm staying lean at the same time. So yeah, I'll definitely like aim to be around 300 pounds and just kind of hold that weight more or less 300 and just be as like hard and lean at that weight that I can be before starting a prep. Like that's ideal to me. And it just, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy that it happened relatively easily. Like, I guess 
I put myself in a good state after Toronto Pro. I got myself healthy again so that I was able to just get back on some good stuff and just like get back to some hardcore training and respond really well. So yeah, that was that was cool. And yeah. uh yeah, still like lots of time to go. But yeah, like I definitely I'm definitely set on doing Toronto Pro. Like to me, I thought about it. There's no reason not to. There's no reason not to like start getting fired up for it. I don't care what anybody says, man. Maybe this is where I'm different, but I see other people like they're like, what show are you doing? Like, ah, I don't want to announce it yet. It's like, well, if you know you're gonna do it, you might as well just for me just mentally focus on like having no other option. So in my opinion, it just feels like when I know I'm doing something, things fall into place as opposed to when I'm wishy-washy about it, like I could get persuaded in different ways. So I just feel like, man, like if that feels right to me, I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to keep putting it out there because I feel like things will fall in line if I do that. So I'm dude, I'm with you. I'm the, I'm the same way, man. Like every show I've done, I've called it like a year or two before. And I've just like completely locked in on that. And that keeps me focused. It keeps me that I'm on my timeline. And it's like, yeah. I have this my off season time. This is my cruise time. This is my prep time. And then like in my, the way my brain works, it's just like, I don't have a day to waste. Like once that, once that date's locked in, you know what I mean? You're accountable to yourself because you don't want to be like, Oh, I'm going back on my word now. Like once you said it, you said you were going to do it. Now you're putting it out there telling other people you're going to do it. You have to fucking do it. So you're going to find a way to do it. Yeah. So exactly. So yeah, so we're 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 similar like that. So that's cool, man. Cause I just I feel like people are like talking about like here are other pros and they're like, oh, I'm not ready to talk about what show I want to do yet. It's like, like yeah, why not? Good. When the hell you wanna when are you gonna feel ready? When are you, you really gonna feel ready? You know, they gotta create the dramatic effect, man. It's hell like, yeah. Go you know, through excitement, you know, even if you just fucking make up the excitement in your own mind. It's like for me, I feel more motivated knowing I'm doing that than if I was like, hmm, when am I starting prep? It's like I know exactly when I'm starting prep now. So yeah. it seems pretty simple to me to do that, to like keep the motivation high. Yeah. Well, even same with me right now, man, like I've decided I'm not going to compete till 2025. And like mm-hmm. that has got me motivated because now I know like my plan, like I know 2024 is like, that's the year I have to grow. Like, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Once, once like November hits and off season's underway, it's just like no fucking around essentially, you know? That's exciting, man. Yeah, dude. So I, I'd say from, I would say like, this is a little tentative because I might want to do like the New York pro or something in 2025, but um, Toronto for me is, is probably like my, where my head is at right now for 2025. Nice. Yeah. So you, you win next year and I'll uh, take it the year after. Perfect. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's move on to these, uh these uh, rate the physique. Yeah, let's do it. We got a bunch. Um my buddy's going to jump on with us right now. He, he wants to get on here with us. And I, I've got his Instagram profile. We'll rate him. Cool. Who's your buddy? Alex. He's my training partner. He's the guy. Okay, sweet, man. We're, we're getting ready right now for uh, the uh, the uh, NPC uh, Nationals. Nationals. What's going on? What's hey, up, man. guys? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, you're good. What's up, bro? Right, nice cool. to meet you, man. <clears throat> This is the guy that drives fucking two hours to peer and back. Hey, it's like it's like an hour and a half. Okay, so let's not exaggerate things a little bit. Here. Crosses the border every every not every day, but twice a week. Yeah, I'm trying to make it happen every day though. That is the end game goal. There so you go. it's worth uh, it. It's worth it. So we we were just bullshit and we were talking about shows and stuff, but um, we're gonna do rate your physique. So we're gonna rate yours first. My physique? Oh fuck! Yeah. yeah. All right, rip me apart. I'm ready for this. Why I've been not? waiting for this moment now. Why not? <laughs> this amateur. Okay. So, Alex Webb. He's a coach. What's up, guys? He's a I'm the American. The only American in this podcast right now. So, you're you're a bodybuilder. Are you any type of specific bodybuilder? Hopefully, a, a decent one, but we'll find that out. Still a mediocre one. But... <laughs> okay, so. Um, front lap spread. Yeah, that's my little transformation from my last national show that I did from where I started. When was, when was that show? This was now two years ago. Oh, shit. Where, yeah. Where's your most recent? This is most recent right here, right? This was, yeah, just the other day at Pure. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is so where I'm at. A, this is the Pure uh, posing room lighting. It doesn't really count. We gotta, like, we gotta take off, like, 10% of your physique here. It's not filtered or anything, though. This is like actual. Uh, you don't need to filter with this lighting. <laughs> the problem sometimes is sometimes the lighting is good, sometimes it's terrible. It depends on where you stand. But we got a pretty good spot here. Yeah. 
Yeah. A big issue though, is like people just over filter their stuff on social media these days now. So you have no idea what you're actually looking at. Half well, the time. That's why videos are good because it, you can't really, it's hard to filter videos out. Like it being noticeable. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can't, we well, can't pause on it. Okay. Yeah. So front, front double need a little bit more arms. Legs are crazy. Front lot looks pretty good, man. Great physique, bro. Side chest. I think you could just fix your posing a bit because your side leg is nuts. Yeah, we definitely need to fix a couple back, things. Yeah. I think your back double and your back last bit are really, they're coming along really well. You got a lot of thickness in your lower back. Yep. And then your hamstrings are insane. How how tall are you and how heavy are you like right now? So I'm 5'10", so I'm a little bit shorter than Robin. Um, and I'm like 260 right now. I may have just dipped under today. No. So, so this one's filtered. Yeah, this, this one was filtered. This one's filtered about two weeks, two weeks ago, right? Thirteen weeks out now. Look, looks quite a bit better than this already. Yeah, we're twelve weeks now. Twelve weeks. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That one's a couple of weeks old now. So I should tell that I got like three people doing that show. NPC Nationals. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our biggest one in the states, and yeah, it's always the most competitive one, which is cool. Yeah, so. I, I was at uh, NPC Nationals back in like 2018 when it was in Miami. Mm-hmm. It was it's crazy show, biggest show I've ever been to. Yeah, yeah, it gets competitive, yeah. but the Canadian oh, uh, shows get competitive too. You guys bring it for sure. So yeah, it's interesting now for me to be part of both worlds now because I drive up to Canada every week. To come oh, where are you driving from, like Michigan or? Oh, I'm from Buffalo. Oh, Buffalo. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, it's actually it's not it's it's actually supposed to be just over an hour, but you usually get held up for a couple minutes at the border and then. There's always traffic on the highway in Canada because you got to drive crazy up there. I don't know what it is with the this, this Canadian last, driving. This is your last show here? <laughs> yeah, that was my last local show. So I was a little off in this one. I mean, it was like a shotgun prep. I did it like eight weeks of prep for this just to qualify. Yeah. So I could obviously be a little bit tighter for it, but. Yeah. Back looks oh, I think I think with your size now, and if you bring in the condition, which obviously you're gonna, because you're working with Dorian, you're, you're gonna fucking have a pretty good chance, man. Yeah. Well, the goal is the overall. You know, we don't we don't want to just win. I want to win with some momentum. And, well, spe uh, especially with like with leg with legs like that. I mean, like you have crazy quad sweep, and uh, you don't even have uh, what happened to your knees. You don't have like fucking meniscus or something, right? I have no ACLs in either knee. <laughs> and, How did you um, manage that? It's crazy. Not much meniscus either. Yeah. How did that happen? Um, years of beating the shit out of myself. So a couple of the injuries were just purely accidental, you know, just yeah. rugby and uh, getting kicked in a mosh pit. Um, but a couple of the times were just completely my own doing too, like going into a bouncy house when drunk. I wouldn't recommend that. So <laughs> there you go. Classic. So okay. Um, pretty sweet, man. Yeah, you'll do good. Um, okay, let's check out uh, Taylor Paquette, who me and Morgan know. Oh, I've seen him actually. I was at the. Um, he did the Pure show, right? Yeah. yeah That's when was. I just started coming up to Pure regularly. Is with yeah, I so actually came to the show. Got so. the uh, the overall win at the Pure Muscle championship in november i believe um and yeah like he looked fucking pretty crazy man let's uh, see if you like in april or something. sorry the show was in like april i think oh was it like that yeah um yeah, he's, like... muscle. he's really thick man he's thick all over he's to me yeah. he, he reminds me of dorian yates like type physique honestly yeah yeah he's definitely like a very thick person and like when you see him in person like he's very uh densely muscled like he's he's fucking pretty thick man for sure yeah it's, it's translates from the way he trains man he's just like he's a heavy trainer lots of intensity yeah. like you know five plate like incline smith presses like eight plate oh hats. here's crazy yeah. shit here's some uh yeah he was he was fucking peeled too did he do um one of your guys national shows this year or nope he uh yeah, he was planning on it, but he decided to just take some more time off. Uh, I mean, I'd say with one with one more off season, uh, it looks like he could just use a little bit more detail and sweep through those legs. But his upper body already looks like pro qualifier worthy. I agree. I was just gonna say, like, 
like his leg size is pretty good, but if you just bring out the uh, separation and the details a little bit more, they'll look even bigger, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, never have too much flaws, show, week, obviously. But yeah, this was his this was his first show since like 2016, and he he like literally been like off season. Yeah. Before. So like you kind of you know what it's like when you get out of it for a bit. Like I think I think after this off season and he does another prep, he'll he'll be bringing fucking heat for sure. The only, the only thing I can say, you know, to be critical is because you can see like he's got some crazy biceps and his triceps are pretty good too. But if they just kind of had a little bit more lateral head here, because yeah. his delts are so wide, it almost you almost want a little bit more sweep on the tricep too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arms arms could use work. Yeah. I'm jealous of his waist from the front though. Most his white guys aren't working with the waist like that. From yeah, the front. like I, I want to find <laughs> that picture of his waist again. Like because you said Dorian Yates, like right here, like that is kind of like how Dorian yeah. Yates' waist kind of looked, right? Yeah. Crazy man. Yeah, I mean, fucking definitely. Uh, was he a super heavyweight? Uh, yeah. Holy fuck! Like yeah. yeah, yeah. So a little bit more size, maybe like five pounds. Guys going pro for sure. Yeah, you guys have a lot of. That's the way. A I lot of good it. competition up there in Canada, like for the at the yeah. national circuit. You know, that's, I'm why gonna, that's why you're competing in Texas because you're scared of us, eh? Yeah, I'm running away from you Canadians. Yeah, so yeah. scary. And he's <laughs> out in uh, Alberta, right? Or no, I'm, I'm wrong. He's no, he's in Sarnia. Oh, Sarnia. Okay, yeah, yeah. He definitely uh, looks like he's from Alberta, though. Yeah, yeah. So we got we got this guy here, massive miss. Uh, I don't actually know his name. He just said like. He sent me this from another account, which I guess Miss is part of his last name. But anyways, um, 19 years old. He's 5'9". He's 205 pounds. He's natural. He's working on getting huge. I would say for 19 and natural, you're fucking getting huge, bro. Yeah. He's like, insane. are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, he's on the way. He's got his nutrition on track. That's for sure. 100%. Yeah. With the legs on him. I know. Yo, bro, hit me up for coaching. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see if, if we can find one with like all the posts. We've got dog. Del like Delts, look, Delts look fucking <laughs> good. Awesome, for sure. So we can find like a full body. Back with wow. the back shot. Go to the back double. Full flat right here. Yeah. It's a nice back double, dude, for yeah. 19 year Natty. Come on. Very, very good. Very impressive, man. Holy shit. Good job. Yeah, I got into bodybuilding when I was 19. He's definitely ahead of where I was at. Yeah, This too. says that he, this was at 178, so this must have been during one of his cuts. And Has he, uh, has he competed before? No. I'm, that's why I'm trying to find, like, a full body. That's pretty nutty, man. For 19 and natural, look at this. Yeah. The guy looks like he's 21 and juiced. Yeah, it's he's got that <laughs> density. You know, yeah. Oh no, man! Do these kids do these kids count arms as uh, being natty? What do you what do you what do you think? What do you think? Do you think that if you're taking a arm, are you still natty? No, absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't so think we've seen we've seen most of his physique. It looks like the, the, this is like you getting a little bit smaller back here, so a little bit older. But yeah, man, you're since you know for 19 for for being 205 right here, natural. This is a really impressive look. I think you have a bright future if you keep it up. And I don't know if you're gonna do bodybuilding or classy, but it looks like you can do either one. So you're done. yeah, kind of pick one and go with it. So. Yeah, bodybuilding. go bodybuilding. You're huge. This is a nutty side chest, man. This kid's 19 at 205. He's not gonna be doing classic for very long. I would I would go to open bodybuilding. Look at the size of these arms. As soon as this guy does a little bit of yeah. test, he's gonna be like 280. 100%. <laughs> Look at that bicep, man. Okay. Sweet. Good job. Um, we got Ryan Garcia. All right. All right. He's an athlete. Who are you when no one is watching? Well, yeah, like we're not going to find that out because we're going to look at all the things you want us to see. Yeah, we're watching right now. We are watching. But this is a cool fucking thing to win. If you got a shield, that's cool. All right, so looks like he's a classic physique competitor. Um, how do you guys rate the blonde? Honestly, I think it suits him. Yeah, he pulls it off. Pulls it I, off. 
How do you look? He has hair on his head. How do you look the tattoo choices? Uh, the tattoo choices. Hey, listen, I can't say anything. What does what does that one say? I wonder what that one says on his rib cage. Never seen a rib cage one like that before. It's kind of cool, actually. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I actually, I didn't even notice it at first. It looked yeah, cool. in his vacuum. It makes the vacuum look better. <laughs> yeah, it enhances it. What's this one on his, on his arm? A heart with thorns. So he might have had like a maybe a bad relationship or something like that, <laughs> and then. A sun, maybe look. What is Where's that? His sun. Where's his scars? The rising phoenix. Well, you're doing good, man. Like you're looking like from here to here, you made some dramatic progress. That's for sure. Oh, for yeah. sure. Uh, and you won overall, so congrats on that. Is he uh, shorter or taller? He definitely looks shorter. Definitely looks shorter. Um, yeah. Kind of reminds me of, for some reason, that guy that just competed, um, a Patrick Tour's client, like Francisco Barrera right. or something. Kind of reminds you of that for some reason. I wonder if he's one of those guys who's going to benefit now from that weight cap increase. Because I know a lot of guys, a lot of the, like the shorter guys in Classic were just getting screwed by those low weight caps. But they just bumped it. What was it, like seven pounds or something like that? Guy plays Kingdom Hearts. Remember Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> Did you ever Probably. play it? I never want to turn it. this into a gaming talk, do we? <laughs> we won't get sidetracked. See? Yeah, I um, know. This, this is pretty good. fucking good. Man, I think this guy's got a great physique for classic, obviously. Yeah, yeah. super, super classic. A lot, of, a lot of, like, really nice flow, man. Like, really symmetrical everywhere. Yeah. This kid's, kid's made for it. Yeah. yeah, I think a little bit more size and maturity, and he, he's there. I agree. Do we, how, do we know how old he is? Um, It doesn't say. Yeah, a little bit more, like, chest and back thickness, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see if we can find an age. Doesn't look like it. Look like it now. Maybe he may. Sorry, maybe he messaged me his age. Let me double check. Because some people did. But the only thing is, like, okay, so for next time, everybody's listening. They want to get their physique graded. If you send me pictures through the question box that I post, don't do that. It doesn't work. Just basically, you have to just comment and then i can just go to your profile and we'll just do it like that uh because if you send me photos i have no way of even like bringing them up um it's like he's a coach himself too i wonder who does his coaching i think he was tagging uh john moff's house he's a coach over in the uk i believe isn't he gotcha no see he just put like a like a hand up emoji but um I'm going to show you guys an example real quick. If you just send me a photo, that's all I get. So it's too small. And like, I can't really click on that. See, nothing really happened. So you just have to not send the photos directly. We'll just go to your profile, which means if you're, if you, if you don't have a public profile, we can't rate you. Yeah. So this um, guy just needs a bit more size. Yep. A little bit more size, a little bit more time. He's, uh, he's on his way. It's those cuts and hamstrings. Those, that's yeah. gnarly conditioning there too. Yeah. Good, for sure, and he looks pretty young too. So work on the back and the chest, like get your back thickness up. You gotta, yeah, legs are pretty good. Um, okay, we got uh, Brian Daly. Uh, I've talked with this guy online actually, like for quite a number of years. Um, but I know that he doesn't like post a lot of photos, so this is probably all we're gonna get. So it is what it is, man. Like I think, look. You're hunting, you're doing the training, but you obviously need to eat more. So I'm just going to say just eat more, man, because look, got a good frame, just build on it. Yeah, he's got some decent amount of muscle there. I mean, his arms look pretty jacked up. Yeah. Uh, just eat, you're, you're lean. That's all I'm going to go ahead and guess that he needs more legs. That's just a guess. Whoa. Yeah, he probably needs more legs. He's out there doing all that hunting and gathering. His legs are probably small. Yeah, that's this girl. Is this girl wearing a fish for a bra? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> it's a scenic shot, man. I like it. This, this is great. Like, this I is some this, big like, ass fish. You know, like, like, someone's parents from like 1970. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was this? I hope that's on a picture frame, like above your mantle. Like, that'd be just perfect. Um, okay. Anyways, you got to post more pics. Yeah. Oh, wait, physique. He's got, oh, no, that's this other guy's. Here we go. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Hamza Royan. So, looks like a pretty young guy. 
Um, let's check them out here. So men's physique. Peeled. peeled. Yeah, definitely peeled. Definitely yeah. good back development. Man, the kid can... Uh, Looks up. really young, man. Yeah, like crazy set of abs and a small waist. You, you add arms, some... You add some on that chest. Yeah, you just... Those arms are long. They're going to take a while to fill out. That's for sure. That That's kind of like how I started out. Like, these kind of like long arms that don't have like super long insertions either. So right. I got a bunch. Yeah, he's a super super short torso. Looks this guy like. not compete for like another three years at least. Yeah, and just get absolutely massive. Yeah, see, yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got those really long arms like you, so he's gonna he's gonna he's have saying. to like train his yeah. chest in that shortened range probably more. Yeah, my arms aren't that long. He's got a good oh, serratus. Wow. Yeah, those good really insertions awesome. through the serratus, which is great for physique. So once he fills yeah. out that physique, it's gonna look really good. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He's got he's got the aesthetic look for sure. It's just size. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, he's got he's got the right hips for it. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. We're off to a great start with this rate your physique. We're getting some quality. Uh, this quality. is unreal, man. I'm getting blown away. There's so many young guys that are just getting off right here. Look at this. What a tan too, eh? Yeah, immaculate color. Wow. Look at him. Hell yeah, bro. Man, he, he looks, looks really young, too. Conditioned. conditioned. Looks like he's working hard. Keep adding size. Oh, yeah, there you go. So Canadian physique. So this guy, this kid's going to be a good pro. Dude, you take like a year off, you put some size on. Like, he needs more back. than a year, bro. Don't tell him a year. He needs like two or three years minimum, dude. Maybe not. I don't know. To turn pro, to turn pro, pretty good. Oh, to turn pro, yeah, but yeah. So what's crazy so far is almost all of the physiques we've seen, I think, are pro potential. Yeah, yeah. You know, like everyone looks solid across the board. We're gonna take take off a point here. You got to be careful, bro. Gotta be careful. Don't get dragged into this this scene. Hey, let the kid have some fun, bro. He he still looks young. He can. I don't know, man. A little bit. I don't know. <laughs> I would say, I would say, try to focus more. Like, I don't know how often he's going in partying, but dude, dude, that's save, like save your money from the raves. That's what all I'm gonna say. That's like men's physique, like culture. That's true. I uh, got a client of mine here, um, Austin. So we did we did one show together. He was pretty large. This is this transformation. Uh, he actually was just straight up powerlifting before. And then I met him and he was like, man, I wanted to start doing some bodybuilding. And uh turns out he's pretty good at it too. So um 300 pounds brought him down to around 180-ish for his show. And uh now he's he's growing. So he hasn't posted anything recently, obviously. Um over a hundred pound drop, though. That's impressive. Over a hundred pound drop, yeah. So um that's basically we got this. That's what, all we're gonna get for now. Good shot. The, the thing with Austin is really, you know, I harp on him about this a lot. Is you can see here is like just his calves. Just gotta bring up his calves. Uh, what now that he has ball? all that weight dropped off, he can finally do a good like lean ball to do it the right way because he's yep. probably never done it before. So. You know, sometimes it's hard to even see what guys' potential are, we, you know, if they haven't done a real off-season before, you know. This guy's case is awesome. down over 100 pounds, and now he's ready to see how his body responds to a real training program. Yeah, you're, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage, yeah. like, when you start bodybuilding and you have, like, a lot of excess fat to lose. Because mm -hmm. you need to, like, you know, you're a few phases away from, like, like you just said, like, to the point where you're going to get, like, that first real off-season because yeah. – Essentially, like cutting, reverse dieting, cutting, reverse dieting, cutting, reverse dieting until you're actually lean, and then you need to build from there. But I mean, the guy's obviously done it, so he's on his way. Exactly, man. I, I think just you know, for Austin, it's just more or less taking the time to fill out his body now, because like, yeah, he needs a little bit more on his legs. Um, we need to tighten up, obviously, just like filling out his skin more or less. So just having having that muscle will just make him look better in the long run. Because there's there's some areas obviously that still have to tighten up. Um, from his back, you got, obviously can't see his back, but we have to bring up his back. Um, but otherwise, 
from his first like bulking phase that we've done, the guy put on like 50 pounds and just he's got the genetics to be big. Yeah. So we can definitely use that to his advantage. So yeah, we're gonna get ready for the Sudbury show in 2024. It's gonna be good. Nice. Um Matthias Kalmar or Matthias. Um let's check him out here. 30 pounds difference, two months between. So uh, I really first reverse really order. brought up those legs. Yeah, man. Yeah, I would imagine he, he he the critique he was given was to bring up his legs, and he obviously took yeah. it pretty seriously. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I would say now his chest looks like it needs to catch up. With I was just going to say everything that. else, <laughs> you yeah. know, but he definitely made some rapid improvements on the legs. So whatever yeah. he's doing there, translate it to the the chest next. And he's really yeah, some enough. arms need to come up. Yeah, mm -hmm. upper yeah upper body. Good, nice shape though. You know. Yeah. Good delts. Delts. Actually, delts are crazy, yeah. Delts are popping, yeah. I'd say, I'd say those delts are taking over a lot of the chest movements. You can see that, yeah. It's pretty easy to pick yeah. out. You can see Is that. Classic lats, or open? Yeah. yeah, lats have improved there, too. Yeah, might, might even be having all those delts take over for all of his arm movements, too. I see people doing that. Um, But um, for bodybuilding, obviously, you just have to keep adding size. But good, pretty good back double, I would say. Look at the back improvement. Yeah, that looks that's like that looks like you know a lot of improvement, like back thickness wise. There. Yeah, nice, nice lots too. Yeah, good job on the back and legs, bro. You're doing uh, yeah, keep what you're doing for the back and legs for sure. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, back and legs doing good. Maybe just change what you're doing a little bit for your chest, uh, arms or something like that. Because I would say just focus on chest for now. Maybe. Yeah, chest first, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Is this like is this guy classic or open? Look, looks like he's doing open because he's wearing a uh, bodybuilding yeah. trunks. And I guess he's hitting a lat spread, but to me, yeah. he almost looks classic, especially. Yeah. Here's his. I guess this is his last show then. So, yeah, I just look like uh, you know shredded but small. Yeah, those delts are out of control for sure. You can you can really see you need the arm size on this one, the chest and the arm size on this one. Yeah. But the uh serratus and everything just peeled. It might look better if he hits that from a different angle, too. Yeah. Like those those hamstrings and glutes, man, like like to not have a lot of muscle and still be that shredded is pretty yeah. impressive. That yeah. is like a Juan Morel type of hamstring drop right there. Yeah. You know? That's nice. Like, it just like that's crazy. Okay, good job, man. You get you get some size on you. You'd be very competitive for sure because you got a nice uh, nice frame and it looks like you're like you're working hard on the legs. So yeah, he's taking the leg training seriously. We love to see that. Should we rate his form? What's the form on this? Hey, he's controlling the eccentric. That's the most important thing that I care about when I see for sure. Hey, come up, you know? come up a little further. Yeah, yeah I agree with definitely that. afford to come up a little bit more, but um, you know, at least he's controlling the weight. You know, sure. that's made the biggest biggest change in my physique over the last couple of years is controlling both parts of the motion. You know, you still yeah. see so many guys now just they focus on the concentric and then they just relax everything on the eccentric, and they're just missing yeah. out half the movement. Yeah, I totally agree. Let's see. It says it says all or nothing. Let's see if he goes all or nothing on this one. No spotter. That's how you know. You better almost die. Yeah. That's it. Come on, dude. Oh. How many more has he got? Are we placing bets right now? He's got two more. <laughs> oh, that was a deep one. Come on, bro. Here we go. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the most fun. I'm going to do this every week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's going for another one. Let's go. <laughs> This guy's serious. See, that's why he's growing, you know? Yeah. This was us on the true squat a couple days ago. Oh, that thing was brutal, man. Oh, you kicked my ass. Yeah. Here we go. Holy fuck. That's it. Oh, we don't we don't get to see the end. We don't know. <laughs> definitely, he definitely I think he it. failed that one. He, he didn't he show the failure. <laughs> okay. No shame in failing, bro. 
Dude, that was a good set. Show that whole thing. All right. Here, let's do another one here. Sushi um, bra. Sushi bra. Okay, here. So, um, actually, he's one of my clients. So, Dylan, he likes to hang out with Devin Bernardo. This other guy, I don't know who he is. Obviously, they're out angling you here. So, <laughs> probably should have probably should have got a better angle, posted a better angle. But yeah, he really got out angled there. Cabana Pool Bar. I told him to stay away from there. What do you think, Mo? He's okay. He's 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 a young guy. He's like 21, 22. Hopefully, the, that's just water and lemon that he has in his hand. That's all I'll say. I told him. I told him. All right. As long as you told so, him. Now, now we both told him. Here we uh, go. This is what I don't like to see. Big mistake. This is a gigantic mistake. You're right. What yeah. You I broke my fucking arm doing this shit. So uh, don't do this. Honestly, guys, it's really, really dangerous. Part of the reason I don't have ACLs in my knees now, too. So, yes, highly not recommended. <laughs> yeah. your, you so, your oh, shit. Head. Not arm wrestling, but doing dumb shit when you're well, out. I caught red handed here. <laughs> At least. I've been hearing a lot about the ketchup chips lately. I don't know what the craze is, but pretty apparently over, they're pretty overrated. The Canadian classic, bro. You got to try it out. All right. Well, I'm on prep now, so in three months I'll think about it. We'll oh, see. Two uh, chips won't hurt you. <laughs> so, this is when we first started working together. Four months, we gained like 40 pounds. For me, with Dylan, like you can see, like everything grows pretty well. We want to just bring up his chest more. He's grown a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. How How old is this guy? Do you know? Yeah, he's like 21 or 22. Oh, geez, man. Yeah, yeah he's got. He's He's on his way. He just needs to keep putting on the slabs. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like, for me, it's just like, because when I see guys with potential, I just don't want to see them ruin it or like, or like make a dumb mistake. You know what I mean? Well, but we also have the mindset that we know how every day counts because of our experience and yeah. our, you know, these young guys, like, don't even have that mindset. Like, they're not even thinking like a week ahead, most of these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I wish here, here's the thing. And like, you know, like when I, when I got into like uh, the party scene, like I kind of was like pretty naive. Right. So I can understand like, how it appears, it just appears like it's a lot of fun and there's like no repercussions. Um, but the thing is, is like, it's also like, it's a big part of like the fitness industry, but you just have to realize that like the people that are inviting you out to go party with them don't have your best interest in mind. So that's why like when I'm talking to my clients like this as a coach, it's not like I want to be like a party pooper. Like I fucking want to party my ass off, but I would rather be a good bodybuilder and like I can party later. I'll party when I'm 45. I don't care. I'd rather bodybuild now, fucking party later, instead of the other way around. Because if you do the other way around, guess what? You don't get to bodybuild. Because then you just don't have the opportunity. So when, when you're 19, 20, 21, just wait. You don't have to party that young. If you want to do it once a year out, that's fine. But I'm talking like on a weekend or like when you are like, Okay, it's summer. We're gonna party all summer, and then we'll get serious again with the no. You're not gonna get anywhere. So that's that's my thing, right? Like, I think I think part of the reason is that obviously when you're younger, and I know I experienced this myself, is that you can somewhat get away with it and still make progress in the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, like I would go out and drink when I was in college. I was in a fraternity. You know, I'd hit the gym the next day. I'd be dehydrated. I hadn't eaten right, and I would still be stronger. You know, um, obviously. I had somewhat genetics on my side and I still worked hard and everything like that. But I know when you're younger, your body is just more efficient. And I think guys are still noticing that they're progressing while they're doing it. So they figure, well, why not? I, I can live both lives for now. But the problem is, is it does catch up with you. you. You know, when you burn the candle from both ends, you know, you're only, you know, hurting yourself long-term. And then what I regret now too, is that, you know, yeah, while I was progressing during those times, how much more could I have progressed if yeah. I wasn't doing that? You know, and that's what I'm always asking. What if now is that, like, you know, if I wasn't going out and doing that, where could I be now? You know, yeah. well, that's the thing, right? with, like genetically blessed bodybuilders that like, you know, throughout their career where they brag about like how much junk food they can eat and stuff when they're dieting, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like I still get in shape even though I eat like KFC every week. And it's like, but what if you didn't? Yeah. Like, yeah. How much better exactly. you have been? Like, you know what I mean? It's it's kind of the same sort of thing. So yeah, and not yeah. everyone has the same process, you know, as others. So, you know, if you're you gotta work with what you got, and some guys are just gonna have to work harder. That's the reality. So um you, know, you gotta kind of 
pick your uh, your your blessings in life, you know. <laughs> Honestly, like the way that I see it too is like what I notice is because obviously pure muscle has a lot of these influencer type of people. They're the ones that like to party. They also like to invite people out to go party with them. So I'm just looking out for the people who actually want to take the sport of bodybuilding seriously and not just be like a fit influencer because it's two completely different paths, right? Like if, if you come to me and you're like, I just want to be like fit and love life and do whatever the fuck I want, but like have a six pack and just like, train hard. I'd be like, fuck yeah, let's go. But if you come to me and you're like, I want to go pro in two years, I want to have a chance of going to the Olympia, then fuck yeah, I'm going to tell you, you better not be partying. Yeah. Just straight up, you know? Like, again, you can always do that after you fucking win, because then I'll go celebrate with you, right? But like, until you've done something, what are you even going to party about? Like, it's just, it really is just a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. It's a waste of your money. And you can't get that shit back. Yeah, I think social media has such a big influence now on, on why people are doing that now too. You know, not to say bodybuilders of old didn't party because I've heard stories about the old school guys yeah. doing some pretty crazy stuff too. Um, but I think there's just this constant pressure to be doing something cool and putting it on social media, mm -hmm. uh, especially with you know fitness influencers. You know that have really big names. You just see they're always doing something. They're always traveling. They're always out partying. They're always you know doing something. They're, 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 you, you always have to be active doing something. There's like a pressure to look cool on social media. You can't yeah. just be a hermit and bodybuild and eat your meals now. You have to show every part of your life. And I think a lot of people just exaggerate their lives on social media to try to seem like they're you know doing more than they actually are well people too are like they're they're doing all this like shit before they're good bodybuilders you know what i mean yeah. like there was a period of time it's like okay like jay cutler and all these guys like okay they were like mr olympia before they started showing their whole life on social media and like mm -hmm. showing them like, going out and eating like 10 burgers at in and out and stuff like that like like the work was already done and they were just like building their brand but like if, if you want to be a good bodybuilder and that's your goal like, like we all know like like how many nights and days have you guys spent completely by yourself just with your meals and like you know go to the gym like that's that's all you do like you know you need to spend the time in the dark because in order to progress in this like exactly like you can't really have a social life for long periods of time and you have to sacrifice a lot like uh, you know from, from, from on that side of things and if you're not willing to do that you just simply will not get there because there's too many guys that are willing to do that yes yeah you know you got to get priorities in order you know I, I have all the respect you know for guys who want to show up and you know and film their workouts and, and you know show their progress in the gym but um if that's what you're taking the most seriously in your pursuit of bodybuilding or fitness you know you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot right off the bat because there are more important foundational things that you need to be focusing on if you want to be successful than being successful on social media being a successful yeah. bodybuilder and being successful on social media are two very different things mm -hmm. and yeah. you know it's I definitely think the main focus is like going in the gym with your camera and taking videos of yourself like if that's what gets you excited then be a content creator like you're not going to be a bodybuilder. i know me as a bodybuilder i don't really love going in and filming my workouts or doing YouTube videos. I would much rather just be in there with my headphones on and training, but it comes with the territory of what we do. And especially with the level that we're at and, and especially if you're trying to make a living off of it. But like exactly. that's my least favorite thing about bodybuilding now is like filming my workouts and posting on social media constantly. It's just necessary. Right. Yeah. That's why you always have to remember, like, what are your actual goals? What are you trying to attain from this? Because for us, okay, so bodybuilder comes first, but then also social media, also just as, as important. Why? Because we also have to make a living. So we decided pro bodybuilding and to make a living. The competing of pro bodybuilding doesn't make us the living. We have to do that through social media, through coaching people by providing a service. So it's two different, completely different things, right? Most people just assume it's the same thing. So that's kind of like where you run into problems. It's like, oh, I'm going to just, I'm going to go pro and then make the money. I'm going to go pro and then things will happen. It's like, you have to make things happen so you can become a pro. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to grind. You have to work some shitty jobs. You climb your way up, then you can go pro, but it's not like that's going to change you. You're going to have to change way before that even happens. So yeah. And yeah, don't think turning pro is going to change shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to give, I got to give credit to the guys who can kind of effortlessly just, you know, do social media and bodybuild at the same time. You know, like, 
who's that new younger guy, Sam Sulik or whatever, who just, you know, films himself working out yeah. and somehow yeah. just blowing up, just being himself because it's, it's not easy to be able to, to do that. You know, I've always kind of viewed social media as like something forced, like it's a chore, something I have to do and I don't enjoy it. And unfortunately, I think my page kind of shows that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is my yeah. afterthought. I need to do it. But really, I'd rather just be training hard in the gym with loud music on. You know, yeah, so. it makes work, man. But I think that's a choice you got to make. Like, I, like I know, I mean, I made thousands of videos at this point, like between TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and stuff like that. And like, it definitely, you definitely get more comfortable with time. And I think that's why Sam was so good at it because I'm pretty sure that guy's posted a YouTube video every day for like two years or something like that. Yeah, like 400 days straight. It's like it's a skill that you build, right? Yeah, and it's like it, it's a skill you're gonna build if you want to make money from doing this. Because yep. if you choose to just be one of those guys that goes in the gym with his headphones on every day, like that's fine. You might be a great bodybuilder on stage, but like no one's gonna give a shit about you if you're not giving them a reason to. Exactly. And and I was talking to like a young guy today, and uh guy's probably like you know, 18, 19. And I talked to him a few times, and uh he asked me on Instagram, I'm like, Yeah, hey, I gave you a follow back. I'm like, I noticed you didn't have any photos on there. Uh, and I was like, how come you don't post anything on there? He's like, oh, he's like, man, like, I don't have a physique that's even worthy of posting. And he's like, I'm probably not even going to post for like, I got at least three more years. I've got to grow and build my physique. I'm like, dude, you're like the only kid that I've ever met that thinks like that. Every other kid that I see, they're like looking for every opportunity to post anything. Mm -hmm. And so I can see this kid's like focused. Like he's coming to me. He's asking me good questions about bodybuilding. We're not like getting into like, stupid conversations about shit like this kid is driven and he's not getting distracted yeah that's those kids are rare these days man that's just a kid that's like you know sense essentially to kind of see through all the bullshit and okay. probably, i mean it makes sense like he's listening to, to guys like us who yep. come on here and talk about how it is and we're real like no bullshit mm -hmm. uh, and, and whereas a lot of these other younger crowd or younger kids are um you know watching like the trend twins yeah and, like, yeah you know, and like Sam Sue, like not against not anything against these guys are doing their thing, but I've looked at some of the shit they put out and it's not proper bodybuilding methods. Like it's not proper dieting, it's not proper drug use that these guys do. Yeah. Entertainment it's, purposes. Guys try to, yeah, it's totally entertainment purposes. It's almost like making a mockery of bodybuilding, honestly. Um, but and these guys choose to follow it and they only hurt themselves, unfortunately, by just not doing things the right way, you know. Yeah. Well, listen, that was a lot of fun. We're gonna do this again. Anybody who wants to get their physique graded, we'll post it up. It'll be in my story. It'll be in Morgan's story. Maybe it'll be in Alex's story. We'll see. Hey. Um, we'll see. <laughs> but like I said, you guys, all you have to do is just comment. You get rated. And uh, we, we really appreciate it. It was fun. So make sure you guys go and check out Rebel Fit Nutrition. Use code BEEF10. Save some money. Support the show. Don't forget to also follow us on Spotify. We now have all of our episodes updated on Spotify, so you can follow us there. Um, other than that, anybody want to say anything else before we head off? No, nope. this is this is fun. I like I like doing this. So like you know, it's cool kind of seeing where the younger crop bodybuilding's at. And there's a lot of new faces, a lot of new names out there. And uh, you know, it's cool to be able to see what the future of bodybuilding is going to look like. And if it's anything like what we just were looking at today, I mean, it's pretty promising. There's a lot of talent coming up in the ranks. So 100%. I'll say this. Okay, next episode, we're going to do a QA. and a uh, Leave your questions in the comments below. We're going to prioritize the questions in the comments below. So get any questions in, any topics you guys want us to cover, and we'll cover it on the next episode. And uh, maybe Alex will join us. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I just can't comment handle below. US, comment below if you want Alex to join us. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it up to the fans to decide oh <laughs> man choose yeah, your fate wisely fans. here should okay. Alex be on next episode you guys decide I'm, good. <laughs> I'm scared to read the comments now <laughs> alright All right, boys yeah. see you next time